Amen. 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 I sat there and I remembered in one of her books, Ellen White speaks of the day to come. All God's children will get together. We'll be going home to glory. And all the best singers of the world will come together. In her words, she says, when Gentile hallelujahs blend with Hebrew hosannas in one grand crescendo, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. And I want to be in the number. How about you? Amen, amen. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be back with you again on this beautiful but chilly uh, Sabbath morning here in Nairobi Central. We welcome all of you, those of you watching online, wherever you're watching from, those of you watching by your television station here in Nairobi, we welcome you. We welcome those of you on the balcony, hundreds of you on the balcony, those here at the lower level, and those outside under the tents and on the other areas, we welcome you. Hope and trust that as we worship together this morning, your hearts will be tremendously blessed. Amen. Amen. It has, been a, it has been a tremendous week for us, my wife and I and our friends, Ashoy, and I, we have been tremendously blessed. And the truth is, I can't say it because folks from Cayman are watching, but, <laughs> you know, I felt like Peter. Lord, let us make three tabernacles. Three of us are here. <laughs> Amen. Let us make three. Let us not go back down. Amen. Let us stay up here and fellowship. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You have been an awesome congregation. The Lord bless you. It's a joy to fellowship with you. And I really want to thank the parents in a very special way. No, let me say that correctly in Nairobi style. The parents. Let me. <laughs> I want to thank the parents for bringing out your children to church. So. And, um, and, for, and for the way that they are involved in, in the services of the church. We are on a mission to rescue our children. Because there's a, there's a scheme, there's a, there's a conspiracy, there's a direct plan to destroy the souls of our children as young as they could possibly be. You may not be aware but the curriculum in many uh, the children in many primary schools are being changed to include stuff that are destructive to the minds of our children. And so I want to thank the leadership of this church to be sensitive to rescue those little minds as young as we can possibly get them so that we can have them in the arms of sweet deliverance. Amen. This morning, we're going to take the next few moments. Um, forget about that. Forget that you're in church. We're just going to have fun in the Word of God. Is that all right? Yeah, we're just going to have fun. We have been having some good fun. We're going to continue to have fun in the Word of God. We're going to talk about the subject just a verse away. All week this week, we have been, we have been unpacking the theme, Jesus is coming, and I am trying my best to see if I can get the folks here in Nairobi to understand just how close we are to the second coming. And today, we're going to take another look at it. And this evening, we have our final service this evening. That's on the subject, the silence in heaven. What's that about? Oh, we're going to unpack that one. Join me this evening for that one, our final presentation. But today... Just a verse away. Your heads are bowed. Father, once again on this your holy day of rest, your people have marched to this place of worship. And now we're about to open your words. We cannot do so without we ask for your help. So please, Lord, Send your Holy Spirit in this place to open our minds and open our understanding 
and speak to us all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going back to the book of Revelation. That's the last book of the Bible. And if you happen to read, you know, you know a lot of folks don't read Revelation. They are scared of Revelation. A number of Christians say, I don't. I'm scared. There are too many scary stuff in Revelation. Um, so they, they, folks just read Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. If all you read is Psalm 23, that's not going to help you. I can tell you right up front. You need more than that. Revela if you happen to read Revelation, you will, you will very quickly stumble on a series of sevens. Lots of sevens there in Revelation. I'll give you just a few of them. Uh, there are seven churches. There are seven trumpets. There are seven plagues. There are seven thunders. There are seven seals. And that's just a few of them. Um, but I'm more interested today in the last one of these, the seven seals. That's the seven seals. Have you seen those in Revelation? Yes, good, good, good. So we're going to take a little dive in Revelation. Seven seals. Very important. Very, very important. For all Christians living in this last day, whether you are a member of this church or a Pentecostal church or a church of God or a Catholic or Roman, whichever church you go, if you are waiting on the second coming of Christ, seven seals, very important. Now, what are these seals? What are these seals? These seven seals. We go to Revelation chapter 5 where we are introduced to them. Revelation 5, John on the Isle of Patmos in vision says, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a what? A scroll with writing both on both sides. Have you seen that? And sealed with what? Seven seals. So the seven seals are what bind the scroll. You know, in, in those days they didn't have books. They had everything is in scroll. They wrap it up in a scroll. And they put these seals around them to bind them, to secure them. So these seven seals. So this scroll, John says, it has writing on, the, on both sides, the back and front. It is rolled up and it is sealed with seven seals. That's where we get the introduction of the seven seals. So that's, a, a, a just, that's just an idea of what it may have looked like back then. Yeah? Seven seals on it. Why, why, why seven seals and what are these seals? Well, let's dig a little further. In verse 2, tells us a little more about these seals. Verse 2 says, I'm in Revelation 5, I'm in verse 2. Verse 2 says, Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. By the way, if you read Revelation, every voice in Revelation is loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every voice. The Revelation is not the time to whisper. Every voice is loud. In the Greek, it is referred to as megaphone, from which we get the word microphone. Yeah, loud, 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 loud. With a loud voice. And what is the angel saying with a loud voice? Help me read. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to do what? Loose its seals. And the key word there is who is worthy, which means not any and anybody can open the scroll or loose it. You have to be worthy, meaning you have to be qualified. There are some prerequisites. So the angel says, who is worthy? To a big angel, strong angel with a loud voice. Uh, the voice, the voice was heard both in heaven and earth, so loud. Who is worthy to open the seal? And verse 3, so, so obviously there's a problem opening the seal. Here's a problem. Verse 3 says, but no, help me read. One, two, three, let's read. But no one in heaven or on earth or underneath the earth. Hang on, hang on. Who are the folks underneath the earth? Oh, it's a good thing I stop and ask you. I don't want you to read and you don't know what you're reading about. No one in heaven, angels up there, four el uh, 24 elders, four beasts. No one in heaven, 
is qualified to open. And then they look on earth and they couldn't find anybody. You know what the song say? I search all over. You know that song? Couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody. You don't know that song? What? Okay. So they, they search heaven, couldn't find anybody. They search earth, couldn't find anybody qualified because it's all sinners on earth. And they search underneath the earth. Who do you think is underneath there? The dead, precisely. Red. So neither living nor dead. Heaven nor earth, nobody qualified to open the scroll or even to peep in it. So obviously, obviously we have a problem because you can't find any qualified person. There's a, hey, 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 hey. There's a dilemma in heaven. And John wants, John is inquisitive, he wants to see what is in that seal. Can't find anybody to open it. I mean, verse 4. So, so here's what John says. John says, I wept and wept. I don't know how you say that thing so highly. I ball. You say ball here? No, what do you say? What do you say when people cry loud? What do you call it? In Swahili. Weaka. Oniyaka. Ayikaka. <laughs> Something. Something. John, John says, I wept and wept. Notice those words. Why, John? Why are you bawling? Why are you weeping? Because no one was found who was what? Worthy to open the scroll or to look in it. Tears. So there's a dilemma in heaven. Nobody can open the scroll because there is a qualification to open the scroll. Is the church with me? And John wants to see what's in it he can't open it. No angels in heaven can open it. Hey, hey. No angels in heaven can open it. No matter how holy they are, no matter how righteous they are, they can't open it. The 24 elders in heaven can't open it. The four beasts can't open it. Nobody can't open it. Because they have to meet the qualification. Is the church with me? So John was disappointed and he wept. Verse 5 says, then while he was crying, one of the elders said to me, said, John boy, don't weep. Uh, don't you like this? Don't weep. See, see, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has what? Triumph, and here is it coming, and he is able, hallelujah, to do what? Open the scroll and its seven seals, praise the Lord. Amen. John, dry off your tears. We found somebody who is qualified. In other words, the only person in heaven and earth and under the earth that is qualified to open the seal. One single person, and is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who do you think that is? Jesus. So I'm going to tell you something now. Jesus is the seal opener. You get that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So anytime a seal is open, it is him. Only him. He's the seal opener. Ha! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm in verse 7. So he came, you know, verse 6, you can read it when you go home. It says, when he looked around, he saw a lamb as it was slain from, uh, freshly slain. And we know that he's a lion and he's a lamb. Verse 7 says, so he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Aha. Uh -huh. So we now know we are in business. All of you inquisitive people down here in church. Who want to get a peep? How many of you want to peep in the scroll? Is only me alone? How many of you want to see what's in the scroll? Raise your hand. Okay, good. On the balcony? Good, 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 good. Because I mean, I want to see what's in there. Why is it so purely fastened? So what are these and what's are in it? 
So now, now we're excited and we say, Lord, open, open the scroll because the folks in Nairobi want to see what is in it. So what are these seals? So here's what I'm going to share with you. So Bible scholars tell us the seven seals represent seven periods of time. I'm going to take this easy for you. You can take this. Seven distinct period of time from the time Jesus left here to the time when he will be coming back. The church with me? Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to help you with this. The seven churches represent seven distinct spiritual experience that the church of God will experience from the time Jesus left it to the time when he come, came, comes back to find it. We studied that during the course of this week. The seven seals are not necessarily about the church, but about what will happen on planet Earth, including the church, from the time Jesus left planet Earth to the time when he comes back. Are we clear? Yes. So, so, so that period of time is divided up in seven different epoch or different uh, periods of time. Now, watch me, watch me, watch me. All eyes on me, all eyes on me. This is so important. If that is so, every, you will notice every time a seal is open, something happened on earth. Is the church with me? Good. Follow me, follow me. So, when this thing happened on earth, we can check Bible and know which seal just opened. Does that make sense? Because every time a seal opens, something happened on earth. So we can, we can check what is happening on earth and know what seal has just been opened. So now I can use the seal to track how close we are to the coming of Christ. It's like a GPS system. Now, that's why it is important. So, so let, let's, let's give an idea. So yeah, it's like... You know, when you, when you send stuff, you can track it on your phone. You can know where the delay is, where, when it will be delivered. That's what we're using. The seal is just like that. It's like a GPS system. So let's, let's, let's examine it in detail. So there you go. I put a little chart on there for you. Every, there are seven seals. Every time one of the seals is open, something happened on earth. And it is, it is symbolized in Revelation by a white horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse. And then souls crying out, then the earthquakes in sun, moon, and star. And then the last one, silence in heaven. We're going to talk about that tonight, uh, this evening. So let, let me give you an idea then. Let me give you a sample. We ain't going through the seven of them. I'm just going to give you a sample of the first one so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So when they opened the first seal, here's it, Revelation 6, verse 1. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Because we say he's a seal opener. Is the church with me? Yes. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder. Tell you all of these voices are loud. Says come. Verse 2. I looked. And there before me was a white horse. A what horse? A white horse. Its rider held a bow. And it was given a crown. And, the, and he rode as a conqueror. Went to conquest. And, this, and the theologians tell us this white horse simply. Horse is a, in Revelation is a symbol of war, uh -huh. but this rider has a crown, which means he's victorious and he's conquering. And theologians tell us this represents just when Jesus, just as Jesus left, the church of God was conquering, spreading the gospel all over the world, all over all over the world. That was a good time for the church. The gospel was expanding. The church was winning its war against corruption and against sin. Right? So that's the first white horse. And you can, uh, you can read the rest of the seals go down because the horse is going to change as corruption starts and as tribulation starts and as persecution starts. You can tell what's happening on planet Earth. But that's a sample of the first, first seal. Let me rush down to the seventh seal. Seventh seal. We're going to talk about this tonight. When you open the seventh seal, what, what, what happened? There was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. Join me this afternoon. We're going to crack that one to see why there's a silence in heaven and why half an hour and what does that have to do with Nairobi Central 2023? That's this evening. So that's just giving an idea of the seal. Well, the seal that I'm interested in this morning is the one next door to seven. 
deal number six. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's my attention. And so that's the one I want you to follow me with. Deal number six. Are you ready for this? Let's take a deep dive into seal number six. I'm in Revelation chapter tw six. I'm in verse 12. Here we go. See what's crack open when we open that seal. Text says, I looked. And when he opened the sixth seal, behold, there was a great earthquake. And, I underline the word and, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air. And, I underline the word and, and the moon became like blood. Uh -huh. And, the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its fig when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Verse 14. Then, then the sky recede, meaning open up and pull back, recede as a scroll when it is rolled up. And then every mountain and island was moved out of its place and the kings of the earth remove kings and put governments, head of states. And the kings of the earth, whether they be kings or presidents or prime ministers, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse 16, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Hey! Take our lives, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Verse 17. For the great, help me read, one, two, three. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So I can conclude, seal number six, the great day of God's wrath comes under seal number now if you're sleeping wake up there are when the lamb John prophesied John prophesied when the lamb in heaven should have opened seal number six five things will happen when you see them happen on earth, then you know that seal number six has opened in heaven. Is the church with me? Yes, you can track which seal we're under. Five things will happen when seal number six is open. Number one, there will be a great earthquake. Number two, the sun became black. Number three, number three, the moon turn blood number four stars fell from heaven and then i'm going to pretend like we're in class anybody remember what number five will be come 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 huh? the sky recede like a scroll meaning the sky open is the church with me yes Five things are jammed, are packed together under this seal. Look at them. That's what we just read a while ago. Question then for us. Notice. 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 That four of them is joined by the word and. And then the last one, then. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you read Bible, read Bible with forensic eyes. Four of them is joined together by the word and, or even some translation only have a common between them. But then the last one is then. In other words, four of them will be a little kind of clustered together. And then the last one, there's a little space before the last one. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's go dig into it. Let's go dig into it. Here's it, here's it, here's it again. In case you miss it, here's it again. 
I looked and when he opened the sixth seal, below there was a great earthquake one and the sun was, became black as sackcloth. That's number two. Uh, and the moon became like blood, number three. And the stars of heaven fell, right? Number 14, the, verse 14. Then the sky recede as a scroll. Watch the flow. So the question is, has the Lamb opened the sixth seal as yet? Why is that important? Because it is under this sixth seal that the great day of the Lord will come. Is the church with me? Yes, it is under this sixth seal that the sky will open and, re and recede like a scroll. It is under this sixth seal that your bank account is empty and your house has no value. It is under this sixth seal that time is over. So the question is, can we confirm whether the sixth seal has opened as yet? So here we go. I hope I'm not scaring anybody. But if I'm scaring you, there's a baptismal pool behind. So we have church. Amen? Yeah, yeah, this is serious business. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Start date. Saturday morning like this, November 1, 1755, 1755, 9.40 in the morning, 9.40 in the morning, local time, in Lisbon, the earth experienced one of the greatest, most powerful earthquake that shook the planet since man existed, impacted Portugal, Iberian Peninsula, Northwest Africa. The number of deaths from that at that time, 1755, 30,000. 17 Saturday morning, like this, 9.40 in the morning, 1755 in Lisbon, the entire place shook violently destroy the entire city and folks thought that judgment was coming then it was followed by a tsunami a huge tsunami that destroyed the entire city we're talking about walls of water about five meters high right <laughs> at the end of the day 30,000 people were dead and they thought that God was coming it is by the way those of you who are scientists it is this earthquake that started the science of seismology, for which we started to track earthquake, it is from this very same earthquake. So, so, so scientists have this Lisbon. This is the guy who started the science of seismology. Scientists has this um, earthquake as huge, the earthquake that changed the entire world. It is recorded in, in it is recorded in history. Here's Wikipedia on this particular earthquake. It says shocks from the earthquake were felt throughout Europe, as far as Finland and in North Africa, and according to some sources, even in Greenland and in the Caribbean, where I'm from. And tsunamis as tall as 20 meters, 66 feet swept along the coast of North Africa and struck Martinique and Barbados in the Caribbean, all across the Caribbean. This is a huge earthquake. Huge earthquake. Theologians have concluded that's the first of the five signs. First of the five signs. The second sign, the second sign, second sign, verse 12, 12 says, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air and the moon like blood. Has that happened as yet? Oh, well, let's check it out if we did. And immediately after the tribulation, here's Jesus, here's Jesus, here's Jesus. This is Matthew 24. This is, watch this. If there's any skeptic in this congregation, this is Matthew 24. I was in Revelation a while ago. I'm now in Matthew 24, where Jesus is giving the exact same prophecy. Not John, Jesus. Here's Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, Jesus says, number one, the sun will be, 
darken and the moon will not give it light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. I'm going over to verse, thir verse 30. Come on. In Revelation, after the stars fall, then Revelation says the next thing would be the sky receding. Are you with me? Good. Here's Jesus. After the stars fall, verse 30, then, using the same word again, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and what? Same thing John prophesied that Jesus is identifying seal number six being open. Same trajectory. Same trajectory. Same tra sun turning dark, moon turning blood, stars fall. Then. So let's check that one out. Has that happened as yet? Well, you can. You know what is nice about this age? You can, you can confirm anything right now before I finish. You can Google it. That's why we have to be careful what we say up here. Because they can fact check us. Oh, pastor, that's not what is true. Hey, dark day, May 19, 1780. Ah, this is from the BBC. The dark day, as it has become known, took place when? May 19, 1780 in New England and parts of eastern Canada. For the past 232 years, historians and scientists have argued over the origins of this strange event. Yeah, uh, here they continue. Half, here's how it goes. Halfway through the morning on that day, May 19, 1780, the sky turns yellow, animals run for cover, darkness descends, causing people to light candles in the morning. And start to pray. And by lunchtime, by lunchtime, night has fallen. People start to wonder, is it the end of the world? Today, says BBC, there are many theories. Was it the result of volcanic eruption, fire, meteoric strike, or something more sinister? Oh, if you ask me, BBC, I can give you the answer. But you see, these folks don't check Bible. I can give you the answer. That's prophesied by John. That's prophesied by Jesus. Yeah? That, that, that's sign number two. May 17, 1780. The very, sign number three is the moon turning blood. The very same night, the very same night, they've been darkened. Something strange happened. Again, documented in history. That night, the moon turned blood, and folks were able to document it. Sign number one, sign number two, sign number three, already gone. So let's move on to sign number four. Sign number four. What was it again? Anybody remember? Star, 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 star. star. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go start. Verse 13, I'm back in Revelation. John says, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Jesus also prophesied in Matthew. As a fig tree drop its laid figs, when it is shaken by a... You know, you go on a fig tree and you shake it, and all the figs fell down. I wish he had used mango tree. Shake it. All the mangoes fell off. He says, the stars will fall like that. Okay? Has that happened as yet, brother preacher? Well, again, history... Thank God for history. History confirms it. The great meteoric shower happened on November 13, 1833. Shocked the entire world. In the Library of Con Congress, this is documented. It's called the Leonid Meter shower Storm. It was seen across the United States in the night and early morning of November 12 and 13, 1833. Those who were awake to witness the storm were in awe as between 50 50,000 to 150,000 meters fell each hour. Ah, I have a little video for you on that one. Don't know if the guys can roll this one. If not, then we'll move on. But that is, are we going to get that? Having some challenge with the audio. Anyway, you can always look it up. The video is on YouTube. So let's move on, okay? So let, 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 let me, oh, there, there goes, there goes a little bit, but they, they don't have the audio uh, of the, 
of the documentary. Um, scientists are looking as to what's the rationale for it. Um, of course, they know that star fall every now and then, but this was at an unprecedented scale. People thought that the world was coming to an end. And when I'm finished, you can go home and, and Google it. It's good stuff. Over 100,000 meteors fall at the same time. The whole sky was on fire. And people start to repent. Say, yes, this is judgment. Scared. All right. People, people were shocked. But again, again, scientists have not yet checked the word of God. So they can't find explanation. If they only check the preacher, the preacher would be able to provide you with explanation. So, four signs have already gone out of five. Is the church with me? Yes. Now, here's where, here's where I need you to take a deep breath. Because I'm going to ask you to look a little closer at the timing of these signs. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Good. Take a deep breath. The great earthquake sign number one was hap happened when? November 1st, 1755. So watch this, watch this. So life is going on, life is going on all of, and then all of a sudden, bam, the earthquake shook mightily. The entire globe shook. Start of the opening of the sixth seal without notice. Come stay with me. Number two, sun turned black, 1780. And I have put there, what's the time difference between two? How long was it? 25 years. Watch the preacher where I'm going. Watch where I'm, because I'm going somewhere. So, so after the first sign, and everybody thought, the earthquake, everybody thought, oh, this is judgment, Jesus is coming. Then, then the next year, people settle back down. Is the church with me? Life returned to normal. We build our life as usual. And everything remained quiet for 25 years, Elder. And then out of nowhere, sign number two burst on the scene. The sun became black, like sackcloth. And that night, sign number three happened. The, 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 the moon turned blood. And everybody was frightened. What is happening? Is this again? They felt that God is coming, and some people repented. Well, no God came, so life returned to normal. Is the church with me? Yes, life returned to normal. And then November 13, 1853, how many years that? Life returned to normal, 53 years of silence and quiet. And everybody do their stuff, go to work, children go to school, people get married, life returns. And then bam, out of nowhere, with no announcement, no notice, no prior notice, out of nowhere, bam, the stars fell from heaven. Hey, sign number four, crack open. 25 years pause between sign one and sign two. 53 years pause between sign three and sign four. And then after November 13, when the stars fell from heaven, prophesied by both John and Jesus, and everybody thought it was judgment day, hey, no God, no come, no sky recede, no mountain move out its place, life returned to normal. And life continues. Life continues. But the text says, after that, come on, help me preach, after that, then, 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 then what, brother preacher? Then number five, the sky will recede like a scroll. Has that happened as yet? Has that happened as yet? No, because if it happened, you would have noticed. Are we together? Yeah, if the sky can't open and people in Nairobi know. So that has not happened as yet. Watch it, watch it, preacher. Watch it, up. watch it. I'm going somewhere. So I have... I have calculated how long is this pause between sign four and sign five. Oh, well, it was in 1833. We are now in 2023. When I checked it out, they, we, we, are, we are now in the pause for 190 years. Life went back to normal, as is the pattern. People continue with their life, building their houses, educating themselves. 
you know, live and die and life for the last 190 years. Hear the preacher. One of these days without notice. Sign number five is going to crack open. One of these days without notice. Because right now, we are, hey, sign number four already gone 190 years ago. We are now waiting on sign number five. Hey, stay with me. Sign number four is already gone. We are now waiting on sign number five. So we are now in between those two signs. We are in the pause. This is what we call the delay of the bridegroom. We're in the pause. We're in the pause. Stay with me. Uh, look, look how close we are to the end. Hey, how close are we to the end? Well, there are five signs under this one. Four have already gone. We're waiting on the last one. Put that in fraction. Four fifth of the seal is already fulfilled. Hey, one-fifth remains. Put that in percentage. 80% of the seal has already been fulfilled. 20% remains. So if there's any skeptic in the congregation, I want to ask you, if five signs are under one seal and four already fulfilled, what should stop the last one from being fulfilled? And what's the last one? What's the last one? Sky open as a scroll. The sixth seal. So come with me now. Come with me. Come with me. Now we understand my passion and my urgency when I call you to give your heart to the Lord. Come with me now. You're going to read this, the sixth seal with this knowledge. Here's it. I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake happened already. And the sun became black like sackcloth happened already. And the moon became like blood happened already that's verse number 12 is the church with me but verse number 13 and the stars fall from heaven um, happened already verse 13 I'm in verse 14 I mean verse 1 then the sky opened like a scroll has that happened yet no let me back up verse 13 has that happened already yes verse 13 is fulfilled already has verse 14 been fulfilled no let's back up verse 13 fulfilled Verse 14, not yet. Verse 13, already. Verse 14, not yet. So where are we? Located. Between the two verses. <laughs> you and I are precariously, dangerously located between two verses. One already happened, one not yet. We are in the pause. So if you ask me, how close are we to the end of the world? One verse away. How close are we to the second coming of Christ? One verse away. That is my burden as a preacher. So when I listen to people go on the pulpit and talk all kind of rubbish, I get angry. One verse away. One verse away. When people use the pulpit and preach, oh, God going to bless you. God going to bless you. God going to bless you for prosperity and health. One verse away. One single verse away. That's how close we are to the end of the world and the coming of Christ. And that is why I say to people, in the name of Jesus, he that has sense, use your sense. Get your soul ready. Get your soul. That's why I say, people in the church who baptize and playing fool with God, stop the rubbish. Get your soul ready. If you have not yet done so, today is a baptism. Get your soul ready. 
That's my mission here in Nairobi because we're just one single verse away. You say, I want to give the Lord my heart to the Lord, but I have to get married first. Marry. If, 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 if it's a job problem you have and they force you to work on Sabbath, leave the job, put your soul in order. Hey, one verse away. One single verse away. 190 years we are in the pause, waiting. And any moment now, any moment now, the fifth and final sign under seal number six will crack open. What happened? The sky burst open like a scroll. Recede. And then Jesus jumps in the picture and says, you will see the sign of the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And both Jesus and John said the same thing. Jesus says, and there, and there, and there, and the nations of the earth will mourn. John says, the rich man, and the powerful man, and the mighty man, and the heads of government, even the poor man, and the slaves, everybody will run to the mountain to say, fall on us! I hope nobody in Nairobi will be in that number. Because you have the awesome privilege to have foreknowledge of where we are. So every man in their house must ensure that everybody is ready because we are one verse away. I'll close this for you. So seven seals up there. Seven seals are up there. We, we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we are we are here. That one. This evening when I come, I'll crack number seven for you. Woo! That's, I can't wait to reach here. But, but notice, we're at the end. Is the church with me? Where the seals come, we're at the end. There are seven churches in Revelation, and guess, guess which church we're in? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are the last one, the end. Everything is the end. Everything, everything, everything. Every sign you put up, and look, woo, we're at the end. We are Laodicea. We study that. We are Laodicea. Last church. Hey, we talk about yes, seven churches. We're the last church. Last church. You remember, you remember the first sermon I gave last week? Yes. Daniel's image. It is a timeline of human history. I wonder, where, I wonder if we are at the last part of that image. Well, we are surely not in the head. We're not in the chest. We're not in the belly of thigh. We're not in the legs. Guess where we are? Last part again. Every prophetic symbol in the book of Revelation concur on one almighty conclusion. We are at the end. We're at the end. So when you see we baptizing people today, it's because we are aware that we're at the end. And when I call you to give your heart to the Lord, you can either come... Last night I preached on that. You know, you, you don't have to come. You can stay. My Bible tells me, he that hath an ear, let him hear. My job is to preach and tell you. Your job is to either accept it or reject it. Choice is yours. Choice is yours. The whole I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens, Jesus says, I'm not forcing anybody. But whoever opens, I'll come and sup with him. Whoever accept me, I accept them. This is why we have church. Let me talk to the folks on TV. This is why we have church. Church is supposed to study the scripture and warn the people. Church is supposed to be the voice of John in the wilderness crying out. Church is supposed to be the voice of Elijah in the last days. That's why we have church. So I'm going to call you because everything tells me that we are at the end. Because of that, number of people who came to this camp meeting this year came to the conclusion that we really are at the end and before before the last sign burst open without notice they decided 
to hand over themselves to God. They decide to surrender. They're not perfect. But they say, God, I don't want when that last sign open, my soul is lost. So since I am aware of it, I'm taking advantage and I'm surrendering my heart to the Lord. They made a commitment to surrender to the Lord in baptism today. They read somewhere in Mark, in Mark that says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. And I, hey, 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 hey. watch me. And I am delighted. And I know in heaven there is greater delight than down here. Of those, the Bible says, angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner. Can you imagine what's happening up in heaven right now? Because there's more than one. By the way, I don't know how many. All of you who decide to be baptized in the name of Jesus, stand up for me, stand up for me. You decide to be baptized today. Stand up for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come, come, come up, come join me. Because I'm, I'm already baptized. Come up, come join me. Come, come. Come, come up.